इंसुलिन or there may be insulin resistance what is insulin resistance insulin resistance is that the target tissues they are resistant or they are less sensitive to the metabolic effects of insulin then we have two types type 1 diabetes mellitus which is also called insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and here the cause is the lack of insulin secretion and the type 2 diabetes mellitus which is called the non insulin dependent diabetes and this is due to the insulin resistance so we will see them one by one uh, the various causes of type 1 diabetes it is also called as the juvenile diabetes and uh, the usual age of onset is the uh, 14 years of age and uh, the what are the various causes there may be injury to the beta cells or there may be viral infections or there may be autoimmune disorders or hereditary plays also important role in the development of this condition um, because it runs in the families the someone's parents or the grandparents they have diabetes so kids they are more prone to develop diabetes mellitus so these are the three principal sequelae of uh, diabetes mellitus in which there is increased blood glucose as we know that insulin is deficient the main function of insulin is to decrease the blood glucose level through various uh, metabolic affair processes hyperglycemia is the hallmark of diabetes mellitus and then we know that the insulin it uh, uses carbohydrates for energy uh, now in the absence of insulin fat will be used for the energy and when there increase free fatty acids it will lead to the more cholesterol formation um, insulin's effect on the protein is that it has anabolic effect but due to the absence of insulin or the decreased secretion of the insulin there will be uh, more catabolism of protein so depletion of body protein leading to weakness and weight loss i will explain uh, various consequences of carbohydrate protein and fat metabolism through this flow chart now whenever there is insufficient insulin so there will be decreased glucose uptake into the cells also there will be increased glycogenolysis that is the breakdown of glycogen and increased gluconeogenesis all these processes they were inhibited by the insulin but now as there is insufficient insulin so all the result of all these processes will lead to the hyperglycemia and uh, there is a threshold value that when uh, the level of blood glucose it reaches about 180 mg per 100 ml in the blood so it will appear which is called a threshold value it will appear in the urine which is called glucose urea uh, as the glucose in the renal tubules it will exert osmotic effect through the process of osmosis water it also comes out of the ecf and leading to osmotic diuresis so the very first symptom of uh, uh, diabetes is the polyuria that is increased frequency of uh, maturation even at night so fluid from the body will lead to the dehydration uh, first the excess cellular dehydration occur the ecf it become hyper osmolar and then intracellular dehydration occur because a uh, water it comes out of the cell uh, into the ecf and uh, due to this dehydration there will be uh, polydipsia that is the increased thirst we have the symptoms um polyuria intracellular and extracellular dehydration and increased thirst that is polydipsia Poly polydipsia is due to uh is to counteract this dehydration uh and if this condition uh, continue without treatment there may be decreased blood volume leading to the uh, peripheral circulatory failure and it may lead to death if untreated uh, due to the decreased cerebral blood flow or secondary renal failure so there will be decreased renal function it may cause uh, serious threats to the life of a patient and now what happens in protein as i have told you there will be increased catabolic effect on protein leading to the increased amino acids level and those amino acids then will take part in the gluconeogenesis so they uh, worsen the condition of hyperglycemia and uh, what happen in case of if there is insufficient insulin so what happen in case of lipids there will be uh increased lipolysis free fatty acids concentration it is increased and we have studied uh apart from the increased cholesterol 
फॉर्मेशन बाय द लेबर दे विल बी इंक्रीज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ किटोन बॉडीज एसिटो एसिटिक एसिड बीटा हाइड्रोक्सीप्यूट्रिक एसिड एंड एसिटोन all they accumulate in the blood and when the ph falls below 7 they will lead to metabolic acidosis uh, which may lead to the diabetic coma and death if untreated in case of protein that i have told you there may be a muscle wasting and weight loss uh, because of the catabolic effect on the protein so these are the various uh, signs and symptoms and now the long term complications long term complications of diabetes they occur after 15 to 20 years Uh, despite the treatment if the person is getting treatment still he can he has to monitor his blood glucose level and should take precautionary measures so what are the various lesions uh, there may be peripheral neuropathy which is very very common it is due to the degeneration of the nerves and there may be the numbness and tingling especially in the extremities or there may be cardiovascular lesion or heart disease uh, it may lead to stroke also vascular lesion occur in the kidneys and the retina uh, diabetes is the leading cause of the kidney failure and blindness and there may be also impaired delivery of blood to the extremities so causing the tissues to be uh, gangrenous in nature and then we uh, have to amputate the toes or the limbs mm. there uh, uh, there may be also ans dysfunction Uh, which will uh, uh, include impaired bladder control and also uh, hypertension can develop of uh, cholesterol in the blood vessels it may lead to atherosclerosis and then uh, it may lead to the uh, myocardial infarction so atherosclerosis occur due to the abnormal lipid this was all about the type 1 now the type 2 diabetes it is also called as adult onset diabetes here obesity is important risk factor um Uh, and also uh, insulin resistance uh, we have a cascade of symptoms which is called the metabolic syndrome so insulin resistance is a part of the metabolic syndrome so what are the various characteristics which are uh, uh, present in the metabolic syndrome it includes obesity uh, insulin resistance fasting hyperglycemia lipid abnormalities uh, there may be increased triglycerides level and uh, decrease uh, high density lipoprotein there may be hypertension uh, so what are the cause of the type 2 diabetes as i have told you insulin resistance is the primary cause of the type 2 diabetes and these are the various symptoms of the metabolic syndrome it all constitute together the metabolic syndrome uh, as far as uh, the cause of the insulin resistance there may be uh, few receptors are present in the obese uh, persons genetic factors also play important role but uh, as far as the cause of the insulin resistance is concerned there may be uh, decreased receptors in obese uh, people or there may be a uh, defect in the intracellular signaling pathway of the hormone these are some of the causes of the insulin resistance uh, polycystic ovary syndrome PCOS they are one of the also common disorders in the female and 80% of the female with the PCOS they have the insulin resistance and the hyperglycemia then we have the obesity then sex glucocorticoids in cushing syndrome i have told you about that um, in cushing syndrome there will be also insulin resistance and it may lead to the renal adrenal diabetes in excess growth hormone in gigantism and in acromegaly there may be insulin resistance gestational diabetes there is diabetes during pregnancy mutation in insulin receptor and the genetic factors genetic factors they play a very important role because all the obese persons they do not develop diabetes genetic factors they are very important in determining the insulin resistance now the development of diabetes type 2 during to long insulin resistance remember insulin uh, resistance cause type 2 diabetes mellitus but when there is prolonged insulin insulin resistance immediately will not cause the diabetes so it is a gradual process as compared to type 1 uh, type 1 may occur abruptly but uh, type 2 it occurs slowly so what happened that in the early stage of disease there will be moderate hyperglycemia that occur after the ingestion of carbohydrate when we ingest carbohydrate uh, there will be hyperglycemia and then uh, there will be release of the insulin but insulin comes and it cannot work because there is insulin resistance 
so uh, there may be a uh, first of all development of slight hyperglycemia then what happened in the later stage that beta cells they exhausted and damaged and unable to produce enough insulin to prevent more severe hyperglycemia then this vicious circle it starts that insulin is coming out and out there is hyperinsulinemia but uh, it's not working so there is hyperglycemia also and it cannot uh, so much hyperglycemia so what happen in the later stage beta cells they become exhausted and damaged so that's how they develop diabetes mellitus again the genetic factors determine whether an individual pancreas can sustain high output of insulin over many years uh, now what is the treatment of type 2 uh, we uh, the clinician it advise exercise caloric restriction weight reduction a uh, walk is uh, very uh, helpful in managing the weight and caloric intake then uh, we use the drugs there are a number of drugs available metformin which suppresses the glucose production and the sulfonylurea drugs which increase the secretion of insulin then we should use the drugs that mimic the action of uh, glucagon like peptide one that increase their action prolong their action because these are the incretins glp1 and gip which is um, gastric inhibitory peptide both they increase the insulin secretion so we should use the drugs that prolong their uh, action and also there is an enzyme which is dipeptidyl peptidase 4 dpp4 it uh, we should use the drug which inhibit these enzymes this enzyme it block these incretins action so when we use the drug which inhibit this enzyme so the incretin effects of glp1 and gip is prolong and it will lead to increase insulin secretion here again is a table uh, which distinguish between type 1 and type 2 the age of onset is really less than 20 it is really greater than 30 years body mass is low wasted to normal type 2 occurs in the obese people plasma insulin is low or absent and here it is normal to high initially then plasma glucagon is high and a type 2 it's also high it can be suppressed or it is resistant to suppression glucose is increased in both cases insulin sensitivity is normal and insulin sensitivity is reduced in type 2 in therapy in type 1 we use the insulin because it is due to the deficiency of insulin and here we use the weight loss and thiazolidinediones which includes sulfonylurea drugs so how we make the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus um the blood sugar fasting it's very important and the insulin level the normal blood blood sugar fasting is in the early morning is 80 to 90 mg per 100 ml and 110 is the upper limit and in type 1 plasma insulin levels are low and even in fasting and after meals and type 2 may insulin is higher than normal so in uh, uh, then we will do the urine for glucose and normally there will be glucose is not detectable in urine and in case of uh, type 1 diabetes there will be glucose urea then a very important test is glucose tolerance test a fasting person is given 1 gram of glucose per kg of body weight and the blood glucose level from 90 mg per 100 ml it will reach to 120 to 140 and it falls back within 2 hour i will explain it through this graph see this is the normal graph that after the ingestion of uh, glucose uh, the blood glucose level it rises uh, above 120 and then within 2 hours it will come to the baseline but in case of diabetics fasting blood glucose is always high it's above 110 then after the ingestion it will start rising and then it will come down after 4 to 5 hours as you can see in the graph and it will never touch the baseline so here we can confirm the diagnosis of diabetes then there is acetone breath that as we know that specifically in type 1 there is increased lipolysis and there is ketosis occurring ketone bodies are formed so there is a fruity breath smell of acetone in case of type 1 diabetes then this is most commonly done test hba1c which gives the information of blood glucose for the past 3 3 months it will tell about the status of our blood glucose level in the past three months and then finally the treatment of type 1 diabetes uh, we administer insulin the human insulin produced by the recombinant dna process in severe type 1 diabetes single dose of long acting insulin each day to increase the carbohydrate metabolism throughout the day we give long acting insulin each day 
and then there is regular insulin which is rapid and short acting we can give additional quantities of regular insulin given at meal times we have different types of insulin there is long acting intermediate acting short acting insulin which is rapid and uh, it's uh, rapid and regular so just uh, important thing is that that each patient has individual pattern of treatment king diabetes diabetes is not curable it is manageable and uh, we uh, have to advise uh, proper diet plus the insulin uh, to the patient and the patient also should be uh, conscious and should uh, take necessary precautionary measures because here the maintenance of blood glucose is uh, the most the utmost goal to achieve and uh, then each patient has individual pattern of treatment if uh, 